Hey everyone, Wolf81TX here, and today we're going to be talking about the SKS. I've had a few of them. The uh, paratrooper is my favorite. I've gotten rid of the other ones. I just, they didn't feel right to me, so I kept this one. Now, the paratrooper versus your standard SKS is shorter. Now, there are two different types of paratroopers out there. Well, there's actually more different types, but for your basic paratrooper, you have some SKSs that were sized down to a paratrooper, and then you have the one like this one, it was actually built as a paratrooper. The way you can tell it is your gas system is actually shorter on the ones that were built to be a paratrooper. Now, these guns are, they're great. They're sturdy. They take a beating. They're great when stuff hits the fan. You can literally put them through hell and back and they will still fire. They were initially designed by the Russians. The Russians used them for, I would say, almost 10 years. And they retired them for the AK. Now, after that, Pretty much a lot of different countries decided they wanted to use the SKS. That's why you see, and a lot of people think the Chinese came up with them is because the Chinese said, hey, that's a great design, we want it. And so the Russians sent some people over there and even sent their equipment. So a lot of the original Chinese SKSs are built to Russian specifications. Uh, this one has got the spike bayonet on it and a lot of the earlier ones came with blade bayonets the uh, I mean these things are just great I mean, you can do anything to them you can change the stock I prefer the original stock that's why this one still has it they're easy to take care of they come with a cleaning kit in the butt all you need to disassemble these is an unfired round. The only reason you need that is you got to press a little button right there in and then the trigger assembly pops out and you can disassemble the gun. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, change the camera and we're going to take a few shots. Okay, now I'm not sure if you can see it down there, but I've got my Magnum rifle gong set up. And uh, I'll go ahead and I'll zoom in after a few shots. That way you can actually see what it does when it hits the target. Now this shoots 762 by 39. It's a great little round. And it's just devastating when it hits. So on an SKS for these style magazines, you have to pull the bolt back before you can get it in. You also have to pull that bolt back in order to get it out. But you put it in, it locks in. Let me go ahead and put my earplugs in. And we'll see if we can hit something. Nice, first time. Miss that one. Don't fight. Using cheap Tula ammo right now. Nice. This that one again. I think I'm aiming just below it. Just a 
above it. One of the two. That one was below. There we go. <laughs> okay. I'm going to use the excuse I've got sweat in my eyes. <laughs> That's my story. I'm sticking to it. I'm going to go turn my gong back around. And then we'll zoom in on it, and you can see what it looks like when the round actually hits. <clears throat> okay, we've got you zoomed in on the gong. We're going to see what it looks like when it hits. Nice. As you can see, it knocks it around a good little bit. It's a short round, but it hits hard and it tries to punch through just about anything it comes across. So for a hunting or even defense, this thing actually does extremely well. I've also found the paratroopers to be a little more accurate. In my experience, they are for me. It's my opinion. They tend to be a little more accurate than their bigger brothers. Not sure why, that just, I'm usually more accurate with them. And I normally don't like short rifles. So, for me, I mean, it was kind of a surprise that this one would work the way it did. Now, if you, when you get to this point, you want to take a break, you want to unload it. This part can be a little tricky, is you have to pull it back to eject around. Go ahead and pull that round out there. Now, holding the bolt back, you have to push this little lever back in order to remove it. Some people find that to be a little bit of a hassle. For me, it's not that bad. When you empty a magazine, as long as the magazine is good, the bolt will stay back. So that all you have to do is pull the lever, eject, load up a new one. All right, I've got a 55-gallon uh, drum set up full of water, and we're going to bump fire this thing into that and see how it does. Okay, I'm not a bump fire expert. I've done it a few times, just not a whole lot. So if I mess up, bear with me. we got 30 rounds in a magazine, and just remember this is for fun. There's nothing... Not trying to prove anything. This is just to show what happens to a 55 gallon drum. And if you've never tried it, it's a blast. It's a waste of ammo, but it's a blast. This is for my buddy Jacob. Hope I can show you this next time, buddy. Still got around in there. Did it again. Now that's a blast. So, I hope you've enjoyed the video. It's been a while since I've gotten to make videos, so I wanted to come out with one that provide you guys with a bang and uh, well let's actually go over and take a better look at that go ahead and put that over my shoulder <laughs> turned it into Swiss cheese Hey, that's actually pretty cool. There's one of the rounds. Almost made it through. 
There's a couple of them that look like they made it through. That's pretty awesome. Well, I said, I hope you guys did enjoy the video today. There's going to be more coming up. Uh, I'm going to be doing a review with that Magnum Gong. That way you guys can get a feel for it and if you want to buy one. They're actually a blast. My buddies love shooting at it. And I'll be posting it along with this video as well. So, y'all take care.